In today's setup, I have this awesome mini keyboard and this tiny Microsoft mouse for the irony. Both are plugged into USB ports on the rear of this dock with the Windows 7 PC, which is also a Japanese cell phone because Japan seems to live in an alternate reality of tech where you could buy a phone that also runs Windows 7. But if this can run Windows 7, it can also run Linux, right? In the last episode, I started experimenting with the external USB boot option. I tested out MS-DOS, running natively on the Intel Atom inside this phone. I also received some suggestions in the comments for other operating systems to try. I've downloaded some live images to test out. The internal drive is a 32GB eMMC based SSD. EMMC has more in common with SD card interfaces than regular SSDs. That makes them cheaper, but slower. The EMMC drive in this phone has two partitions. One for Windows 7. The other is a 9GB recovery partition for reinstalling a fresh copy of Windows 7, if needed. Since I didn't get any software with this phone, I want to back up this internal drive and all partitions before installing anything internally. Linux should have no trouble working with eMMC, and it's also the best option for doing the backup. Okay, the first distro I'll be trying is Bodhi Linux, and I've put it on this really fast SD card, and then into this USB adapter. Now I've got to restart Windows to get to the BIOS screen, where I can push F12 and bring up the boot menu. I'll be able to select the USB device and simply boot from there. Okay, the main boot selection screen. There's a number of options here. I'm going to choose the first one to just run the system without installing. Okay, we've got start up. And a nice boot screen there. This does seem to be taking quite a while, a couple of minutes, so I'm going to skip ahead. Now this is a 32-bit CPU in here, so I am only choosing 32-bit based distros. And uh, look at that, it seems to have not properly started up. It looks like it's gotten as far as BusyBox with a built-in shell, but hasn't been able to get to the GUI. I'm not really looking to debug why this isn't starting, so I think I'm just going to try a different distro and see what happens. Okay, the next one I've got here is called Slax, S-L-A-X. Straight into the boot menu and it crashes instantly. This one looks like it just failed to load the initial loader. There are quite a lot of distros to choose from, so I'm just going to keep moving on to see what sort of results I get with some of the others. Okay, next up I've got Slacko. And first up we get a grub menu and then straight into the Slacko selection. Looks like it's based on Puppy Linux. And I'm just going to choose the first option here. Unfortunately, this one seems to have just frozen with Slacko on the screen. It hasn't done anything for at least a couple of minutes. I don't think anything's happening. Not having too much luck with this process. Uh, this is fairly unusual hardware, but I would be expecting something a bit better than this. If you have any ideas about what I could be doing wrong, please do let me know. Okay, I'm going to change course a little bit here and start React OS. It's an open source version of Windows NT. And I've never actually run this before, so that seems kind of interesting. So it starts the loading screen, but then just blue screens immediately. Okay, well there's a couple of debug options which I can run. Uh, the second one certainly gives me a lot of information on the screen there. But again, I don't want to put in the effort to try and get this started on this hardware. This is more about experimenting at this stage. Okay, next up I've got Ubuntu Mate, which seems to be a slightly different version of Ubuntu using the Mate desktop. I'll zoom this one ahead so we can find out what happens. Okay, something's happening. Took a while. And we have an initial loading screen. Okay. Uh, 
look at that. We've got a mouse pointer. Okay, I think it's going to try to do something. We've got a desktop starting. Okay, finally we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, the initial welcome window is a little bit cut off, but, uh, but there's that first option to try Ubuntu Mate. So that's the one I'm going for. Okay, we've got a menu. It's looking pretty good. Uh, oh, the menu seems to have unexpectedly quit. Hmm. This is really quite challenging, this whole thing. All right, but I'll see what else I can do here. I managed to get the control panel. And of course, I want to go straight to display settings. And there is an option to rotate the screen. And there we go. We've got a nice horizontal landscape screen. I think we're starting to get somewhere now. Okay, so I've been playing around with the display settings a little bit. And the touch screen seems to work. But something else I've noticed is when the display is rotated into landscape mode, the graphics update is a lot slower. It's like when the screen is rotated into landscape, it's no longer using GPU acceleration. Also, the touchscreen doesn't work properly in landscape at all. I guess that's sort of to be expected. I'm only rotating the screen, not the input device. Well, I'm just glad that I'm starting to get some success. Okay, with those tests done, I think it's time to do some backing up. Now, I thought I'd be clever and try Clonezilla, which is software that's been designed for doing drive backups, which is exactly what I need. And it's based on Linux. And the first problem is when I start it, it just gets stuck on the Clonezilla title screen. Now, with a lot of these distros, I've been putting them onto the SD card in ISO mode, but I've also been trying RAW mode with some of them. With Clonezilla, when I switched from ISO mode to RAW mode, it actually started booting further into the system. But it kept stopping when it tried to initialize the graphics card. And I tried all the different graphics mode that Clonezilla had, but I couldn't get any of them to load. This is kind of disappointing, because I thought Clonezilla would generally start on almost any system. And the other problem I found when testing all these systems is sometimes the system would just halt, and the USB wouldn't work at all anymore, and I'd actually have to power cycle the dock to get the USB to detect and boot again. So that's three potential problems that might be stopping some of these systems from starting. Using ISO mode or RAW mode on the SD card, the video adapter not being initialized properly for some reason, and the USB sometimes flaking out and just stopping working. But if I want to go further with all this, I definitely need to do a backup. And I'm just going to have to hope that it's stable enough to do it. Okay, well, it's time to just do the backup. So to do this, I'm going to run Ubuntu Mate, which is an easy to use distro, but it's still full Linux under the hood. And importantly, I can switch it to a horizontal landscape mode, so I can actually see the screen properly as I'm working. Now I do use Linux sometimes, but not as my main operating system. And I'm checking through the disk utility on Ubuntu, and it is showing all the drives, including the MMC. And it shows there's two main partitions and one very small one. And so I want to back up that entire drive. And this is interesting. Linux can also see the 32 gigabyte SD card, which is in the micro SD slot. Under Windows 7, to access the micro SD slot, you have to run this weird special program and enable the slot, which then times out after a few minutes if you don't use it. So I kind of assumed that the SD slot was actually part of the ARM-based phone, and Windows had to use some special software to access it. But Linux just seems to mount it, and it seems to work fine. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, running the fdisk command, I can confirm exactly how everything's mounted on the system. It looks like the SD card that I'm booting from has a couple of partitions, and the main one seems to be read-only. So rather than remount that and get it into a writable state, I'm just going to back up the internal drive onto the 32GB micro SD card. 
though it looks like the micro SD card is slightly smaller in capacity than the 32 gig drive that I'm going to back up. So I'm also going to compress the image down as it's backing up. So I've read about everything that I think I'm going to need and I've got a good idea of the syntax so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Okay entering the dd command and then inputting the drive that I want to back up as if equals slash dev slash mmc blk1 and then piping that into gzip and then saving that into a file on the SD card. Now I'm actually reviewing what I've done after the fact so I've already made a couple of mistakes. Ubuntu doesn't have a root shell so I need to make this a super user command with sudo. I am having a bit of trouble with the mount name for the 32 gigabyte micro SD card but eventually I work out that I can use slash media slash Ubuntu mate slash SD32 which is the name of the SD card. I also work out that the status switch that I wanted to use on DD isn't going to work if I put it after the pipe into gzip so I just won't have any status. And then everything seems to work until I realize that the micro SD card is formatted as a FAT32 file system so I can't put a file on there bigger than 4 gigabytes. So I use the disk manager to reformat the card and it gives me the option of NTFS. It's like Ubuntu wants me to use a Windows filing system. But that's good enough for me so finally I start the process. Now none of this has been optimized. I am expecting that it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. After a couple of hours I come back and I see it still seems to be going. So checking the file that's being saved onto the SD card, it's now 15.9 gigabytes, so I'm pretty sure this is working. I left it for a little bit longer, and when I came back, it seems to have been completed. Checking the file, it's now 20.1 gigabytes, so I think it's done. Well, that was a pretty good experience. I've learned a little bit more about this hardware now, and with the internal drive backed up, I'm ready to do some experimenting installing something onto the EMMC but I'm not sure what yet. If I install a Linux distro I'm going to want something that's really responsive on this system. So I'm open to any suggestions or thoughts that anyone might have. The other possibility is that I could install Windows 10 on here maybe. I'm not sure that it would run particularly well but that would be interesting to see as well. And that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.